Hi, I'm Tom Sharpless, and I'm here to show you how I use PT GUI 11 to create sector masks for stitching stereoscopic spherical panoramas. A sector mask selects a range of horizontal angles on the panosphere. In equirectangular projection, that is just a rectangle 180 degrees tall. In the image, it is a lens-shaped figure coming to a point at zenith and nadir. The exact shape depends on the lens calibration and camera orientation as well as on the enclosed angle. These are masks for a certain circular fisheye lens on a level camera that I use for stitching single row stereo panoramas. I also use sections covering various vertical angles to select, for example, the floor, walls, or ceiling of a room. For this work, I need a project that has the right lens calibration and camera orientation. This particular one is a calibration series for the Samyang 8mm circular fisheye on a Sony A7R. On the pano editor window, I've used a little slider at the bottom to make the grid line spacing seven and a half degrees, 12 boxes below the equator and 12 boxes above. Uh, this is a twitchy adjustment, so I have saved a project containing it. Now I can use these grid lines as a guide to place mask edges at specific angles. Image 7 is the central image in this project, so I'm going to select just that one image for display. Checking its orientation, I see that yaw is essentially zero, pitch and roll are nearly so, and I'm going to set them exactly to zero because that's what they would be if my camera really were level. I must also check the cropping circle is set correctly because that's a critical part of the calibration. So now I'll display the image in the mask window and get to work. Notice that as I move the brush cursor in the mask window, the little X-shaped cursor in the pano editor tracks it. I can draw my sector easily by watching that little cursor. I want a red mask with a clear sector, so that I first select the red brush and control click to fill the mask with red. Now I'll use the clear brush to draw the sector. Let's draw a mask 45 degrees wide, offset 22 and a half degrees to the left. For the right edge, I put the little X just left of center, click to paint a dot, then move up and shift click to paint a line. I'll continue that uh, until I've filled in most of the height of the thing. The line has a constant width on the image, but on the equirectangular it gets wider as you go away from center. So I have to put the X progressively further to the left in order to get a straight edge. At the top and bottom, I'll just complete the line by eye on, by looking on the mask tab because the equirectangular cursor is useless up there. But when I'm finished, I'll have a straight edge that goes from zenith to nadir and maybe a little beyond. And now for the left edge, I will follow the vertical grid line six boxes to the left of center, Put the, putting the uh, little X slightly to the right of that line and uh, progressively further to the right as I go toward the poles. And then 
as you can see, this generates a beautiful curved line on the image. I'm finishing the top and bottom by eye, just as before. So now we'll do the bottom section. This is a mask that could be used for the single camera method of stereo uh, panography. Of course, you use them in pairs. Now, fill in the center, clear the center, and I'm ready to save my mask uh, by clicking the Save Masked button here and I'll give it a file name that describes the camera, the lens, and the mask geometry. Namely, A7R SAMI 8 left 45. It'll be a PNG file that PT GUI can reload whenever I need it. I can easily convert this mask to a potentially more useful one, 30 degrees wide, centered 30 degrees left. I just need to redraw the right edge by following the grid line two boxes to the left of center. I'll draw in red, putting the X a little to the right of the guideline, and progressively farther right as I approach the poles. As before, I'll finish the ends by eye. So click again in the center, shift click at uh, two box intervals to draw the curve and finish by eye. Fill in that clear area. Now I have a very nice uh, loon shaped mask which I can save. Uh, I'll save it under the same name as before, but changed to indicate the different geometry. For the single camera method, you need masks in left-right pairs. But rather than draw the right ones, I will simply load these files into Photoshop, flip them horizontally, and say... So, that's it. And uh, thank you very much for watching.